What's up, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. So as you probably know from my previous videos or just playing the game in general, there's a ton of mods and keeping up to date with all of them using Nexus or whatever platform you're using to download mods is a lot of effort. You have to log into each site, check to see if there's an update for each and every one of your mods. And if you're unlucky enough to be hosting a dedicated server for you and your friends, you'll have to go ahead and manage all the plugins on your server as well as your client. And often you'll need to give updated versions and configs to your friends as well, which is a huge mouthful and a ton of work to do. Much like this used to be an issue in Minecraft, you may be familiar with mod packs there. In this tutorial here, I'll be showing you how to make mod packs and easily share them to your friends using a simple bit of text that they can copy and paste into their mod manager client. And they'll immediately have all of the most up-to-date mods or ones matching your server, configs, and more. This video isn't going to cover dedicated servers that will probably be in a separate video linked in the description down below. This video is just showing you how to set up the mod manager, create mod packs, and share them with your friends to play. It's super simple and easy to use once you have it set up and you understand what you're doing. So first of all, you'll need to head across to the Thunder Store for R2 Modman. Previously, this used to be a mod manager for Risk of Rain 2. However, since it's expanded into Dyson Sphere, Valheim, and GTFO. Of course, Valheim is our interest here. All you have to do is simply head across to this page in the description down below and then click manual download. Click to open the zip with WinRAR, WinZip or whatever you have installed. And when you see all of the files like this, we'll need to extract them into a folder so that we can install the mod manager. I'll simply create a new folder on my desktop, drag all of these files into said folder, close the zip and open the folder. And now we can proceed with installation. I'll double click on R2 modman setup.exe Next, choose an install location and then click install. After it's done, I'll make sure this is checked and I'll click finish. Now at this point, you should already have Valheim installed and you should have played it at least once before to get everything set up on your computer. All you have to do is select Valheim from the list and then click select game. Now it'll go ahead and scan your PC for existing mod packs and the rest and you'll be dropped onto the screen over here. Usually you'll see a list of mod packs, but as you can see, I've only got default here as this is what I have it set up to. I'll click select profile, but of course you can click create new to give it a custom name, which you can rename later. So select profile. Inside of here, we have the start modded button, start vanilla button to start the game without mods, installed online to get new mods, configuration editor, settings, and a help screen. To begin, if you don't have the game installed on the normal C Steam Apps location, you'll need to head across to Settings. Then on this list over here, you need to scroll down until you see Change Steam Directory, then Change Valheim Directory. This is what you're interested in. Click Change Valheim Directory and simply choose where the game is installed. For me, it's on E Drive, Games, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then finally Valheim. After opening the folder so that we can see the files as such, simply click select directory. Now, of course, as you saw in those files, I already have mods installed. What do I need to do? Well, if we head over to the install tab over here, you can see it hasn't detected any. If we relaunch the application, you'll see after selecting Valheim, selecting profile, you'll see that we still have no mods detected. But if I go into the game's directory over here, you'll see Bepinex as well as the other files dropped by Bepinex, which I think is winhttp.dll. All that we need to do to prepare the game for actual mod pack installation is to remove existing mods from here and put them into a different file. So I'll right click cut and I'll place them into say a backup folder. This way we won't have any clashes between old outdated plugins and ones installed by the mod manager. Of course, if you recognize any other files that mods could have installed, simply make sure to move those out to a different directory as well. On top of that, it's also these files here, doorstop libs, unstripped core lib, and doorstop config. That's fine. I just downloaded and opened up Valheim Plus to make sure that all of these files were supposed to be here, which they're not. So moving them across to my backup, we should now be done and ready to install. Awesome. So at this point, if I fire up the game, it'll be completely vanilla. We can test it with the start vanilla button over here. And as predicted, there we are back into the vanilla version of the game. Awesome. So let's close out of it and have a look back in here. Under the online section, inside of this screen, we can search the thunderstore.io webpage for mods. Of course, one of them that you'll be installing is probably Bepinex pack up here. So I'll click on it and all you have to do is click download. After doing this, I'll click download with dependencies. And of course, a nice little feature is you get to pick the version. Cool. So there it is under installed. 
and it's already set up, ready for us to play with. If you don't know what mods you'd like to install, simply sort by download count, rating, etc, etc. I'll sort by download count and we'll install some of these mods over here. I'll be downloading, say, better UI, crafting with containers, equipment and quick slots, inventory sorting, auto repair, non-restricted portals, explore together, master teleportation, first person, no stamina cost while building, crafting station range, maybe Valheim FPS boost. I'm not too sure what this mod does, but as you can see, I've already installed a ton of mods. And if I visit the installed section, you can see I have 13 here. Whenever an update is available, you'll be able to click on it on this list and you'll usually have an update button or at least you'll know that there's an update available for it. You don't need to go and check every single one of these mods on their respective pages, making life a whole bunch easier for you and your friends. On top of this, a very nice feature is that you can simply click configuration editor in the bottom left and it'll be taken across to a page like this. And here, you'll be able to customize configuration files that come with mods. But as you can see, configuration files are generated after launching the game with the mod installed at least once. Currently, only BepinX is showing on this list as it comes with a pre-made config file. Simply clicking edit config will drop us into the screen over here where we get a title for the option, a bunch of text about it, and then finally a setting at the very bottom. But before we get here, let's go ahead and start the game in modded mode with everything installed. I'll click start modded in the very top left and as you can see, a black command prompt window appears, launching the game using BepinX. Here's the game over here. As you can see, running BepinX, 13 plugins loaded, F5 to open a console. If we have a look in the R2 Modman launcher, you can see 13 mods installed, so everything's working in game. The game does look very ugly compared to usual, but I would assume that that's the FPS boost, which also means that that plugin's working. So let's go ahead and load into a world just to see if the rest of the plugins are working. And here I am in game. It looks a bit too Robloxy for me, so I'll go ahead and uninstall that FPS plugin. I'll simply quit out of the game, head across to the install section, and I'll locate the FPS boost, which is here. I'll click on it, then simply click uninstall or disable. I'll be completely uninstalling it as I don't like it very much. But now that we've launched the game at least once, if we head across to the configuration editor, now you can see a whole bunch of configs over here that we previously didn't have. If I click on, say, MK first person, edit config, we see a whole bunch of text down here about different settings in the plugin, such as what button we'd like to use to toggle, change FOV, etc, etc. On top of this, we can have a look at the, say, inventory sort plugin, and we have all of these settings here as well. Once you're done setting up everything as you like it, all you have to do is start the game as modded once again, and you'll have all of your settings and all of your plugins working. Let's have a look inside of the config for the no stamina mod. As you can see, by default it's set to 1, no stamina costs only when using the hammer, hoe or cultivator. We have different options here as well for no stamina costs in god mode or no stamina costs even when not in god mode. I'll be setting this to off as an example so that we can check later. This means that this plugin is enabled but it shouldn't be doing anything for our stamina. If I were to try and build or do anything with the hammer out, we wouldn't have any stamina costs. But now the plugin should be installed, it just shouldn't be doing anything. So let's go ahead and start as modded. You'll see why we configured the plugin to not do anything instead of just disabling it a bit later when we get to sharing this mod pack with friends. So I'll start game and head back. Of course, it looks a bit better as it's not loading up in some plasticky FPS optimized state, meaning the plugin was successfully uninstalled as well. Awesome, there we go. I'm inside of the world. And if I open up a chest, you should now see a sort button underneath it, allowing me to sort inventories and the rest. And as you can see over here, I've got items on my body instead of in my inventory. Now, something important to note is that if you have a mod that adds slots or does something crazy such as this over here, when you uninstall the mod, any items in these slots will usually disappear as they won't be used in game anymore. So before you uninstall, say, the mod over here that adds these extra slots, make sure to put these items back in your inventory by right-clicking to dequip these items. This is very important as if you don't do this and you uninstall the mod, anything in these slots over here will simply just vanish. Awesome. So now we know the plugin's working as expected and if I run around with the hammer, I should still have a stamina bar, which I do. Great. So let's go ahead and figure out how we share this mod pack with friends. We'll know the configuration carried across as well if we run around with the hammer and we lose stamina. By default, if you install the plugin and have your hammer out, you won't lose any stamina while running around. So let's test it out. I'll quit out of the game 
and I'll head back to R2 Modman. All you have to do is head to the settings section of R2 Modman and scroll all the way down almost to the bottom so that you can see export profile as code, export your mod list and configs as code. Simply click this and you'll get this code over here. This code has been copied to your clipboard, just give it to a friend. Cool, so if I was a friend, all I'd have to do is download and install R2 Modman and then paste in this code to import a mod pack. Let's go ahead and do that and see if the configs carried across as expected as that is a very annoying part of updating and sharing mods with your friends as well. So over here I have my laptop, not too sure if Valheim is installed and it's not. Let's quickly fix that. And there we go, now that it's installed I can click play and it'll launch up on my laptop. There we go. As you can see, it's a fresh installation and everything's working as expected. So I'll quit out of the game and I'll download and install R2 Modman. So once again, I'll simply be downloading it, opening it up. I'll be dropping it into a folder on the desktop for installation as such. Then I'll open up the installer and follow through the steps as before and then click finish with run checked. So that we have it. R2 Modman has now been installed. I'll click Valheim to select it, select game, and then after it connects to Thunderstore inside of here, all that you have to do is click import over here and then from code. Now we simply paste in the code. Looking back at my main computer, I'll copy this code and I'll paste it into my laptop over here. Import. As you can see, defaults are already in use, so I'll name it, say, Techno and click create. Now the mods are being downloaded and imported into this profile. So not only can you have one mod pack installed at a time, but different ones to choose from. So I'll click Techno, select Profile, and as you can see, 12 mods are installed and set up ready to work. Why 12? Well, because I removed one of them earlier. Cool. So now if I click Start Modded, you might see something like this. Obviously, I need to go to Settings, then locate the game in here. So change Valheim directory. And I think it's in D drive, Steam, Common. There we go, Valheim. Select directory and start modded. There we go. Now the game is launching via Steam. And as you can see, Bepinex is installed and enabled. And so should all of the mods as well. So let's see if the config carried across. I have the no stamina mod installed on my laptop over here, which was brought with the mod pack I just created. But inside of it, it shouldn't do anything. So I'll click start game, load in with whatever character I have into whatever world. And there we go. Now that I'm in game, I seem to be entering another dimension for some reason. Let's try reconnecting. Maybe choosing a different character. That one might be bugged. And there we go. Outside of my house, I'll hit tab. And as you can see, the sort button is here, as well as my extended inventory here. Awesome. Let's go ahead and test to see if running around costs stamina. And yes, it does. I'm unable to look around as this is a remote desktop session and my mouse doesn't seem to be carrying across into the game, but it's fine. My point is still brought across. Let's go ahead and test what happens if we enable the no stamina mod by changing that config setting. What this should do is it should get us to not lose stamina while our hammer is out just to prove that this works. So I'll change this back to the default of one, save, and I'll fire up the game using the start modded button. There we go. Let's try a start game and load into the exact same world. And now that we're back here, let's try pulling out the hammer once again and sprinting around. This time you can see that there is no stamina drain, meaning that the no stamina plugin is working as expected. It's not costing me any stamina with my hammer out. And as soon as I put it away, there is suddenly stamina to be drained, meaning the plugin's working properly. And also meaning that our config was shared across computers simply by setting up the mod manager and sharing the mod pack code to a friend of ours. So now that I've changed it here, what happens to the original where I downloaded the mod pack from? Well, let's quit out of the game and head back to my desktop PC. Now that we're back here, as you can see, if we head across to configuration editor, no stam costs, edit, you'll see that our setting here is still set to zero and not one, meaning changes only work one way. And I'm quite sure after saving your changes or updating the plugins, etc., you'll need to head back to settings and then export the profile as a code once again. Other than that, it's super simple and easy to use. Now I'll be figuring out how to get this to work with dedicated servers so that you can manage those remotely too as well. If you're interested in that, make sure to check the description down below if it is even possible. But besides that, this should hopefully be enough to get you setting up your own Valheim mod pack and possibly sharing it with friends to play with. Whenever updates for plugins and stuff come out, simply just updating the plugins should be more than enough to get it to work with your friends. And of course, exporting as a code if it doesn't work properly, getting them to import it again will work 100% of the time. But anyways, 
that's about it for this video. I've done a lot of talking, so hopefully you've kept up. If you have, you're going to enjoy yourself a brand new Valheim experience with mod packs that you can easily share and manage with your friends. Thank you for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.